Anyone Pictures is the perfect representation of modern anime studios within the 21st century. Looking at veteran houses such as Toei Animation, Tatsunoko, and Madhouse Slash Mapper, the way staff are incorporated into shows is very, very different from how PA Works, JC Staff, Lurch, and A1 Pictures organize things. And it basically comes down to the difference between a handshake and a high five. Or a better analogy for the differences between frequent freelancing and employment. Recent coverage around the web of A1 Pictures has been odd. A mix between projection, assumptions and dodgy secondhand research has led to a strange image of the studio being some sort of evil mastermind doing the Demon Lords, Aniplex and Sony's bidding. It's a cool picture, but the problem is that if you go into research with the goal of finding an argument, you will find it. But that comes with ignoring other information that would derail it, or in this case, provide a pattern much larger than a single culprit. In case you aren't aware, which is obviously understandable due to a closet industry, A1 Pictures works are almost entirely composed of freelancers, and the studio itself acts as a phone book for a huge amount of talent within the industry. But the details of this are more important than that fact, because the way freelancers are brought onto projects is based on working relationships between various members of staff, and a constantly changing production committee looking for a particular outcome. It's certainly not ideal and it's a product of a modern industry that just can't afford to give everyone jobs. I've got a video coming up on PA Works and how annoying it is that the reason shows like Charlotte, Angel Beats and Nagina Asakara look so goddamn good is because of a man called Kazuki Higashiji. But if you look at the very top of his Twitter profile, it says he's a freelance art director and that's for someone who has basically shaped the image of what PA Works shows really are. Freelancing isn't only an A1 Pictures problem, and as easy as it is to blame A1 for the Holocaust, it's an industry problem. The freelancing, that is. And whilst it means that we get to see amazing animators, directors, or artists in unexpected places, there's also a constant grapple for talent, as this model has resulted in a huge increase of anime being made over the past decade or so, leading to the opinion within the industry that there's just too much to be able to rely on quality in many cases, as even the most organised production Productions can falter when you're relying on someone outside the studio to create your most important scenes. This doesn't just apply to animation staff either, as you can probably imagine how difficult it is for the people who have to facilitate this. A1 Pictures may not be in charge of decision making the majority of the time, which I'll explain in a moment, but there's a ton of production assistants, production runners, production managers and more whose job it is to make sure this amalgamation of staff from all over the place work according to schedule and yes, it's as hard as it sounds. And in 2010 this was made clearly apparent when an A1 Pictures production assistant took his own life due to work related stresses. For clarification, he was a production assistant and not an animator as some sites mistakenly reported. But as episode director Taiki Nishimura stated, it's not a solely A1 Pictures problem and the way in which the industry runs today is to blame. But unfortunately it's something that I can't see changing anytime soon and we're going to continue to have outsourced staff on Silverlink, JC Staff and many other studio productions. But the phrase blame the industry is as much of a cop out as saying A1 Pictures puts in no effort. It's meaningless. Industry is not a person, industry doesn't make decisions, industry doesn't exist. But the people who have the most control in many cases are those sent by executives from outside of the anime industry itself. Kadokawa, Bandai Namco, Dengeki, Shuaisha, Kodansha, Sai Games, Shogakukan, Ichijinsha, Square Enix, Overlap, Movic, and so on so on. Basically, publishers. You're probably aware by now that most anime is created as an advertisement for another product within a different industry, and with the growth of light novels, manga, visual novels and such, the anime industry is being dragged along with them. And it definitely works. Ninatsu no Taizai is my favourite example where the manga got such a huge boost in sales that it became the second best selling manga of 2015. Even though A1 Pictures is 100% owned by Aniplex, this doesn't mean that Aniplex has majority creative control on production committees and in the majority of adaptations there will be more external producers than internal. Occasionally there won't be any internal producers at all. 
These are the bosses that are there to represent the interests of investors and make sure the show as a whole goes smoothly. It's not as malicious as it sounds of course, and producers generally have a respect for the show, for the director and for the staff as they, like other staff, want the end result to be something that everyone can be proud of. It's just that they include the publishers in that assessment. And once again, it's a widespread thing, and Aniplex producers aren't even specific to A1 Pictures shows, with producers going off to other studio projects. For example, Shunsuke Saito, an Aniplex producer, who was part of the team responsible for bringing the Anohana team back to work on Anthem of the Heart, was also working at Seven Arcs on the magical lyrical Nanaha movies, which Aniplex was funding at the time. Same situation with Aniplex producer Yosuke Toba, who stuck with the Idolmaster series and most likely worked to supervise the transfer of core staff, like putting Megumi Kono into an animation director seat in Cinderella Girls. He spent a load of time on Gintama, Kill la Kill and Love Lab, all at different studios. So who on earth is A1 Pictures if the head management depends on the production committee and the core staff are entirely outsourced? Well, there's production assistants, uh, supervisors, a few Finnish animators, and in-between animators. But I imagine that's not entirely the answer you were looking for. In a way, A1 Pictures is a huge portion of a shared industry with producers who care about getting the best staff available in an industry that just can't support that type of thinking. There is no A1 Pictures look, no A1 Pictures character design, A1 Pictures has no control over whether a show gets a sequel or not, Aniplex doesn't have consistent creative control, and no, they're not McDonald's, or whatever that means. Thanks for watching the Canaper Effect, now what's Grimgar and Bokumachi? Grimgar is the product of a hugely talented director and Bokumachi reunites the Silver Spoon director-writer duo to make something genuinely special. So what mischief will we get up to next, my demon overlords? So I was thinking, um, uh, how about uh, Gunslinger Stratos Season 2? I totally agree.